In America today, over 3 million students have dropped out of high school. High school students decide against graduating for various different reasons, all of which could be fixed or easily avoided. These kids are the future of our country, and at a rate of more than 8,000 students withdrawing from school each day, something clearly needs to be changed in our country's education system. The law states that students may legally withdraw from school at age 16 with parental consent. As a member of the generation that is our future of America, I believe that the law shall be changed to require all fully able students in the United States to abstain, obtain a high school diploma. In order for this law to work, an aptitude test would be designed and all students that fall in the range of average would be those who are impacted by this new law. Because some students are not mentally capable of acquiring a high school diploma, those with disabilities would be excluded from this new law. In addition, extremely gifted students, those considered geniuses, whose abilities stretch far beyond those of a high school student would not be affected by this new law in order to avoid holding them back from reaching their fullest potential. So, why do students drop out? Well, it is the belief of many Americans that students withdraw from school just because they don't care, they're lazy, or they think it's useless. In some rare cases, I'm sure it's as simple as that, but however, studies have shown that there are usually underlying issues with the majority of those who withdraw from school. These kids are going through something much more serious that's negatively impacting their education. There's a lack of motivation that can be driven by family problems, such as a lack of support from their parents or even siblings. Also, if a child comes from a home where their parents or grandparents graduated from high school, it's hard for the student to know any better than what they were surrounded by growing up. In some situations, a student comes from such a bad area where school just isn't thought of as a priority. They're struggling just to stay alive every day and transporting back and forth. It's just too much of an issue for them. However, on some other cases, kids simply just skip school without their family or friends even knowing. I spoke with a close friend from home, Taylor, who dropped out of high school her junior year, and she said, you don't just wake up one morning and say, I'm done. It happens over a period of time. You skip class one day, then the next day, and so on until you're so far behind that you can't catch up or it's just too much work to do and you say, screw it, eventually. After speaking with Taylor, it opened my eyes that students just skipping school is one of the major issues that schools struggle maintaining control over. I think it goes without saying that any citizen in America would agree that an educated person is much better than someone who dropped out of high school and is uneducated. However, these conflicts with truancy arise. One major benefit of this proposal is that requiring a high school diploma would open up jobs, and more teaching positions, and even positions for truancy officers in school. People would be hired to monitor the homes of these said students and do weekly checkups to make sure that the student is attending school, as well as remaining safe. In severe situations, students who live in these areas with high crime rates could be escorted to and from school in large group, maintaining safety in numbers. While we can force students to show up to school, problems arise in the amount of effort that they put forth in their classes. A student could show up to school merely for the attendance and not complete anything productive, thus resulting in suffering grades. At this point, why even bother making the students show up? This here is another area where advisors, counselors, or specialized teachers would be hired to avoid these problems. These positions could attempt to figure out the source and reason for the students lacking motivation and also give students more one-on-one -on -one time where they would have less of an opportunity to slack off in class. These hired counselors would work on the psychological aspect of finding out what issues are contributing to the academic problems. While, on the other hand, these new specialized teachers could use different activities to keep students on task. Because every student learns differently, these teachers could meet in small groups with students and figure out how information could be presented in a meaningful and interesting way. Taylor, my friend from home, went on to explain how she wishes there was someone at our high school to motivate and pay more attention to her. She said, if you don't care, then you don't go or you just don't do the work. Then you eventually give up, only to regret it later on in life. Adding these positions can help students and push them in a direction towards success. Theoretically speaking, this would increase the success in unmotivated students. When these students see the improvement that they have made, they will most likely have an increased level of motivation to continue to make positive changes academically. Now, after hearing about all these new jobs that are going to be opening up, one would probably wonder where the money is coming from to pay for their salaries. On average, a high school teacher in State College Area School District makes roughly $50,000 each year. Adding 20 new part-time specialized positions, making half the amount of the existing 282 full-time teaching positions in this school district, would only be a slight increase in the residence taxes. 
the total amount of money spent on teacher salaries would only increase by a small 1.04%. Altering an education system is not a simple task and definitely not something that can be accomplished overnight. In January of 2013, Obama proposed a bill to raise the legal age of withdrawal from school to 18. There was little to no response from state governments for months. In July, Kentucky was the first to respond to this and took action with the help from Governor Bashir. Within the next five school years, Kentucky officials believe that the new dropout age will be widespread throughout the state of 18. With my new proposal, each state would have the flexibility to create an individual plan on how to implement these changes, just as Kentucky did this previous year. States with high areas of high crime rate would adjust those counties' education systems first, seeing that those are the ones who would have the most positive imp impact from this proposal. Over the course of five years, the alterations would become more widespread throughout all the states and this new law would be in full effect. I would like to thank you all for taking the time to listen and consider this proposal to require that all ABLE students in America obtain a high school diploma. I hope my ideas and various points have helped you realize the severity of this issue with students withdrawing from school and convince you to considering altering the education system.